Welcome to Jazz Time. JazzTime.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to purchase it at the lowest price anywhere online, click on the link in the description below to buy it at JazzTime.com. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Patek Philippe Nautilus Ladies Automatic with a blue dial, stainless steel, and a diamond bezel, reference 7118 dash 1200A-001. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history of the Nautilus, then tell you about where does this watch stand in the lineup of other similar Nautiluses, then tell you about the case bezel dial bracelet movement, and let me try it on and give you my thoughts. So let's start with the history of the Nautilus. In 1972, Gerald Genta created the first Audemars Piguet Royal Oak, which is the first world world's first luxury sports watch. That's 1972. Four years later, Patek Philippe decided, we're going to make our own version of the luxury sports watch. And they asked Gerald Genta to also make a, a design them a luxury sports watch. And what he came up with was the Nautilus. And so it's been around since 1976, which is almost 50 years. Now, you might say, well, Nautilus came second. Yes, they did come second, but that doesn't necessarily make it worse. Or it also doesn't really necessarily make it better. It's just who came, you know, who came. It's kind of like saying who de uh, developed the first sports car. Does it make it the sp that developer have the better sports car? No, it's just they came up with it first. So that someone has to come up with first and someone has to come up with a second. So it doesn't really matter who came up with it first or second. The fact is that it's here and it's done fantastic for both brands, Audemars Piguet and Patek Philippe. For Patek Philippe, they don't have a lot of sports watches. They only have the Nautilus line, which is what you're looking at here. And they have a offshoot of the Nautilus, which is the Aquanaut, which is on a usually on a rubber strap. It's an ultra sports version of the Nautilus. The Nautilus is the main sports watch that Patek makes. Okay, so that's a little bit about the history. Now let's talk about where does this watch stand in the lineup of other similar Nautiluses. Well, the Nautilus first came out in men's size, as you can imagine, because it looks kind of like a manly watch, and luxury sports watches were designed for men at the time. Now, there's a lot of many, many different Nautilus variations for men, but for women, there's not so many, and I'll just tell you briefly what they are right now. For women, they basically make what you see here in stainless steel, or they make it in rose gold. That's the two big variations that they make. In the stainless steel versions, they either make it with diamond bezel, as you see it here, or no diamond bezel. And that's pretty much it. And then once you have the stainless steel, you only have three dial variations to choose from. Blue, what you see here, white, or uh, gray. That's it. There's not a whole lot to choose from. And Patek does that on purpose. They try to keep their sports line to have the not very many variations to it and they also make they happen to make a quartz version of the aqua of the nautilus in gold it's a little bit smaller than the automatic version but for the automatic version which means that it runs with a mechanical movement that self winds you do not need a battery then th these are the options that i just told you are all that exists for at least as of the current model Okay, so that's where it stands in the lineup. And of course, these are very difficult to get. I guess I could also say that they also make some super crazy diamonded out versions. I know that they do. I didn't mention them because for most, let's say 99% of the collectors out there, those watches are not attainable. They're, you know, they have massive price tag behind them and they're very rare. So for all intents and purposes, for the Nautilus ladies, you can choose from steel, which is what you see here, or rose gold. All right, now let's move on to talk about the watch itself. The, the Starting with the case. The case is 35 millimeters. Now, you might think, now just to give you some reference, uh, Rolex Datejust midsize is 31, which fits most women, and a 36 is large for women. Now this at 35, you might think it looks uh, you might think that sounds large, but it actually is not that large, and it, it is a very nice size. Most women can wear it, and it is a sports watch. It's not really a dress watch. So a sports watch 
having a little larger of a size is not a bad thing. And it integrates very well with the case the head of the watch does, so it doesn't look so large. Okay, now the case itself is 35 millimeters, and but the good thing about this watch is, if you even compare it to like a Datejust, for example, it's thinner. A Datejust, I, I believe, is somewhere around 11 millimeters. This watch, on the height of it, is only 8.6 millimeters. That is very thin, even for a lady's watch. 10 is considered thin, and 8 is actually even considered ultra thin. So, I'm not sure why they don't tout that more, but it is very thin. Okay, and that has to do with the movement. We'll get to it when we get to it. So, that's the case. And I want to point out the case is special in that the case integrates with the bracelet in such a way that it makes the watch look harmonious as one not as if it was designed case and then strap later as an afterthought no the way that it's designed you see these lines on the side they're high polish and they run down the side of it look making the watch look very congruent and as if it was designed at one singular time watch band head everything all at once which it was and it really has not changed much in the way of design since it was designed in 1976, a very long time ago, almost 50 years ago. Yes, they, but they meaning Patek has modified the head and a little bit just to match and make it look more feminine. But the same basic idea has not changed. It a men's Nautilus more or less looks like a, a women's one, except the women's one is a little bit more feminized, I guess you could say. Okay. We'll get to why it's feminized in just a moment when we talk about the next thing, which is the bezel. Now, generally putting diamonds on a watch feminizes the bezel. Not always. Sometimes you have baguette diamonds, which still looks very masculine. But these round, brilliant diamonds, which Patek uses here, are make the watch look very feminine. In fact, there's 56 diamonds, all hand-placed and, and set to perfection with D-color, internally flawless, natural stones. These are the best on the market that, that one can buy and Patek uses them and places them perfectly so that the bezel glistens and glitters in the perfect way. And in my opinion, the small diamonds is a thing of beauty. Too big of diamonds and it just makes the watch look cumbersome. Too small diamonds, you can't see them. I think they've done it just right and they've continued to do it this way for a very long time. So I believe they also think they did it right. And many buyers believe they've done it right as well. In fact, I would say this is one of the most beautiful bezels that you can get. Okay, that's the that's the bezel. And I might also point out that the Nautilus uses a very distinct bezel. It's not like the Royal Oak octagonal shaped bezel, which is also iconic. But Patek can't just copy Royal Oak. So they made sort of this... It's more than an octagon. I would say it's like, uh, how do you say like 12 a gon? I don't know how you say that. Deca something? Deca deuce? Deuce? I don't know. Whatever. Anyways, it has uh, many sides to it. So it's not exactly circle, but it's not exactly a square either. It's got a round, it's, I would call it a rounded square. Okay. So, but it has a, a particular look, which is what you see here. And not only did they... The, uh, make a beautiful bezel in the Nautilus, they took it a step further and they put diamonds on it, which for a, a female, as I said before, really feminizes the watch. It makes it much more wearable for a woman than if they had just left the bezel flat like they do in, in uh, another version of this, which you can also buy, by the way, if you don't like the diamonds. Me, personally, I like the diamonds. I think if you're going to get it and you're a woman, you go with the diamonds. Okay, anyways, that is the bezel. Let's talk about the dial here also. Now this dial is blue. It's a very brilliant blue of all the colors, which is only three, there's white, gray, and blue. The blue one is the best, uh, I wanna say the best seller because it's, it's the most expensive. It's the most expensive and most desirable. Now why that is, well, you know, you can uh, judge for yourself and you know, it's a very, it's a very beautiful color. Now, Patek actually calls this blue opaline, opaline. Why exactly they do, I'm not sure, but um, they do, okay? So, it, it and also it has these sort of wave pattern. Now, 
I was telling you, I was going to tell you why it looks feminized. Well, it has a sort of wave pattern to it. And I believe that also feminizes it and softens the watch. Also, when you look at the dial, you look at the hands, they kind of, they have these distinct looking hands. They, they do not look like that on the men's watch. For the men's watch, the hands look different. They are, they're just complete, they're just, they're flat. Here they have an angle to them. And you might think that's not a big deal, but I believe it makes the watch, it, it blends in with the rest of the watch. And they've done it so per perfectly. They don't actually use these kind of hands, interestingly, on any other model. So you only see these kind, I know I'm harping on these details, but I'm trying to, you're watching this video because you're thinking about buying this. And I'm explaining to you what I see having sold thousands of watches is that these hour markers or hands have been feminized and they don't use these hour markers and hands on any other model except for this one and i believe they designed especially for the ladies nautilus such that it would be more feminized and they achieved their goal if you ask me okay and also the date at the very bottom okay that's the dial let's move on to the bracelet now the bracelet also is a very beautiful bracelet now the newer bracelets first of all you can i can say that the center links are high polish they have a high polish down the side it's called a beveled edge with a satin finish a very beautiful beautifully done and then if you look at the bracelet okay now the bracelet is iconic patek nautilus but the buckle the old buckles used to be a pressure system now it's a butterfly system you click the sides it opens but not only does it open you can also adjust two millimeters on either side of the bracelet by simply pulling out which gives you four millimeters comfort extension on either side. And you might not think that's a big deal, but trust me, when you put this on, you'll realize, wow, it's a good thing that they did, it, did that. Now, if you look at other brands such as uh, its main competitor, Royal Oak Audemars Piguet, they don't actually have a adjustment system. You actually have to buy a 1.5 link and you can only leave it with one, one setting. This is a much smarter system, if you ask me. And I bet you, they will change that in the upcoming models for Audemars by figuring out how to extend their bracelet. Patek has already figured that out and the, the result is what you see here. And also when you open up the class, such attention to detail, you see, you see the uh, filigree uh, emblem right here. It's just really beautifully done. It's a, uh, if you ask me, it's executed to perfection. Okay, now let's move on to the movement. Now the movement is a 26, 330SC movement is a common movement that Patek make, uh, uses. And I believe, they, I can't remember exactly which other ones they use it in, but they use, they do use it in a lot of movements. And pretty much any watch that is using uh, time and date, they're using this 26330SC movement. And they, I believe they even use it in their other uh, Nautiluses for men. Uh, the, uh, I guess I can check that real quick. It's uh, 27 millimeters in diameter. Let me see what they use for uh for their men's oh yeah i just checked right now they actually use the same thing 26330 sc for the men's nautilus interestingly okay they for the men's nautilus it's a diameter of 27 which is the same movement 26330 sc and it's the same one for women so they use the same movement for the men's and the women's it makes sense because it's just telling the date and time but the thing is the movement is therefore kind of small in the men's because the men's watch is 41 this is only 35. So to be honest, it looks a little bit small on the men's, but it does look perfect on the women's. So that's a cool thing. Okay. All right. Anyways, that's the movement. Look, it's time for me to try this on. Now, I'm obviously a man. You're a woman. If you're watching this, or maybe you're a man watching this for your wife. And uh, look, this is, in my opinion, it's a really beautiful watch. It's the best everyday watch that you can uh, uh, get for a woman at Patek because it's steel. She can bang it around if she needs. Or, and uh, it has, it's still very feminine and it has a, a brilliant, amazing dial color. So look, if you want to buy this watch, go to jazztime.com. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on the mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. 
If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in Jazz Time, plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.